All right, guys, and welcome back to NFL Breakdowns. I'm Sam Gold, and today we're looking at Evan Ingram from Ole Miss. He was a nation's lead in receiving yards for tight ends and was a consensus first-team All-American. Ingram has the speed and vertical receiving ability to be a dynamic threat at the next level. He is an explosive player who will haunt linebackers with quickness and suddenness in his breaks. The New York Giants picked him at 23, and while this is a bit earlier than I would have picked him, I think he is a good fit for their team. Watching Ole Miss has been a lot of fun for me. The variety of formations and how well Chad Kelly and Evan Ingram connected was fascinating. Against ranked opponents, they consistently put Ingram in a position to succeed as a focal point in their scheme. Versus Florida State, Ole Miss overloads the left side of the field, sending Ingram on an out-and-up route to the sideline. The receiver on the left side of the field runs a post route, clearing space while the running back runs through the flat to hold the linebacker. This is what allows him to catch the first down. Ingram is very slippery and has a quickness to slide in between defenders. Versus Auburn, he showed he's a natural athlete and that he can grab the ball out of the air. He also has a good vertical leap where he jumped over a defender in the end zone in the Georgia game. He offers a lot to the Giants offense in terms of his receiving abilities and can't be guarded by a linebacker in space. He is a clear mismatch and will demand safeties or cornerbacks to cover him. At Ole Miss, Ingram lined up in the slot and has a wing tight end just off the formation. He was asked to block and pass protection and as a run blocker. He showed consistent effort to find his target. He was also much better head up on the defender than he was on sift or cut blocks across the formation. His biggest and consistent issue was that he missed blocks by lowering his head. I counted at least three versus Alabama where he simply didn't keep his eyes on his target. You could see that here versus Ryan Anderson on the edge. Also, he was asked to pull across the formation of lead block and easily allowed the defender to make a play on the ball. This happened so many times during the season that it became downright embarrassing. In my opinion, this is a fixable issue, but it needs to be recognized and coached going forward. Another problem is they had seven drops this season, including this pass versus Florida State. He needs to do a much better job with his concentration to secure the ball to the air. Here's another example for Zauburn. He dropped a wide open post route that would have gone for a touchdown. Also, Ingram isn't the best with contested catches. He needs to do a better job of physically boxing out defenders in the air. Way too often, he allows them back in the play so they have the opportunity to break up the pass. In my opinion, Ingram is going to be a playmaker in the NFL. With the Giants, I can easily see them using him like the Washington Redskins use Jordan Reed. They can play him in the slot as a receiver or play the H-back role for their offense. In Ben McAdoo's scheme, they can use him on option routes just like the Redskins do here versus the Eagles. His speed and quickness is an instant mismatch versus linebackers and I highly expect him to do similar things. I mentioned Jordan Reed and that's who I would use as his pro comparison. Reed was slightly larger coming out of Florida, but they were both smooth route runners. Ingram has a deep speed to put pressure on safeties, while Reed is better as an underneath option because he's more adept at finding holes in zone coverage. Versus Alabama, Chad Kelly had a huge missed opportunity where Ingram beat his defender in off-man coverage. This is the type of pressure you can put on opposing defenses. Where their receiving abilities are similar, they both also need to work on their blocking skills. This offseason, the Giants also signed Brandon Marshall from the New York Jets. Their offense is stacked, and if Eli Manning can play better than last year, they should be an explosive team. Alright, well that's it for this one. For my next video, I'll be staying in the NFC East looking at Taco Charlton who is picked by the Dallas Cowboys. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Sam Eric Gold for suggestions as he'll be my last NFL Draft related video going forward. Also, you can donate to this channel via Patreon if you have a specific topic you want me to look at. 